Good morning, everybody. <coughs> it's a funny thing. It's <laughs> daylight saving time. Yet somehow, Kanaina Hara, and I hope this continues, but it's all, you know, we try our best, and it, 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 it's all up to the Rebbeinu Shalolim, but I, oh, Hashem, I, I, Kanaina Hara, I got up, and I learned a little bit, and I davened already, and uh, I'm on my way to work, and it's Gaval uh, Gazach to be, you know, like one of my old chavrusas used to say, Parva and Gadavan. <laughs> you can eat whatever you want. So, and it's Nissan. We're not allowed to fast. So here we are. It's, uh, it's, it, it is what it is. So anyway, I really want to make this video. And I'm sorry to waste 46 seconds of your time with that nonsense. But I really want to make this video again. This is kind of preemptively and I'm no one to be doing this, and it's a chutzpah for me to be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I think the way for me to fight the chutzpah is with more chutzpah, <laughs> is um, to defend uh, my Rebbe from high school, and I respect very much, even again, I don't necessarily agree with him with everything, but with a lot of these things here, I do. And, but it's not—it's not a difference if, if Joe Kolakowski agrees with with this very harsh of a rub or not. And it's not really me. It's you know I talk to my other rebbeim, and I, I come to different conclusions. And, it, and and he's fine with everybody. He should be fine. I think so. At least he says so. You know. But anyway, there was a <coughs> video was posted to YouTube. Rabbi Weinberger. Uh, Rabbi Moshe Weinberger, who's the Rav of Eish Kodesh in Woodmere, was answering questions from the general public, and it would seem that the majority of the people who were asking these questions were not Shomrei Torah Mitzvahs. They were not observant, they were not orthodox, perhaps. <coughs> and, and they were new, or interested in becoming new to these devotions. And he was discussing, you know, a lot of very deep things, but in a very basic way, in a simple way. And I could imagine that there's going to be backlash from from these Kleine Kepelach. And I'm and I'm going to explain why I say they're Kleine Kepelach. Why, and I, and I'll name them by name: Yossi Mizrahi and Yaron Ruvain and their acolytes and, and disciples what is the issue with them what what are they getting wrong and I know that they, they mean well I'm not, I'm not saying that they're bad people I'm not saying that they're but they're getting they're making major major mistakes and that's what's leading them and again it's not a cult of personality about Rabbi Moshe Weinberger that we're concerned with here but in general a Torah review, and in general, why was Yossi Mizrahi banned by certain rabbis from uh, going and speaking in, in certain shuls and so forth? You know, what? Why? Why is he not seen as mainstream uh, in the Klal Yisrael? And I understand the people that defend him, but I, I, I still feel that this defense that I have against his statements is true to what Chazal say. Not only in spirit, but in word. So I think I'll, I'll deal with maybe the less obvious uh, of the two. I didn't listen to the whole shear. It's an hour long, and I listened to the first 48 minutes or so. And maybe I'll listen to the rest later. It's Hashem, maybe today. Uh... <coughs> But the one issue was there was a Aida was an addict and he was very down on himself and I think we all beat ourselves up every now and then we're all down on ourselves every now and then but this guy was really down on himself was really beating himself up and very depressed And 
Rabbi Weinberger said, you know, never ever say such horrible things about yourself ever again. And You know, I, there was a movie, again, I'm sorry for quoting uh, popular culture. I don't know how popular it is, but it was a movie that I saw. It was a biopic about Laurel and Hardy. It was called Stan and Ollie. And at, at one point, you know, Oliver Hardy is talking to his wife, and he's putting himself down, and, and his wife said, hey, that's my husband you're talking about, right? And... If we talk like that about ourselves to God, God could say, well, that's our child you're talking about. That's our... That, that's, that's my child you're talking about. That's my... Even in Shir Shirim, husband and wife, you're talking about <coughs> levels. It's my wife you're talking about, the Knesset Stroll. But certainly that's my child you're talking about. That's my friend you're talking about. God loves us, and, and I remember, you know, and I and I, ha I I struggle with a lot of issues, and I remember I, I, someone was giving me musr about these issues, and they said to me, you know, you love yourself too much, and the tr truth is I don't, don't love myself enough, and probably if I loved myself more, I wouldn't be doing these things. That's the truth. Um, I, you know, I'm not trying to justify anything that's wrong, anything that's prohibited. But the, the, this Eid who is an addict, he, and, and he's, you know, in the midst of the addiction, you know, his recovery seems to be a, a very difficult road, and he, he talks about how some days he doesn't even get out of bed for days and days. Uh, because he's afraid that he's going to act out in, in, with his addictive behavior. And he says, you know, some days he gets up and he puts on tefillin and he does, he, he does what he's supposed to do, he davens, whatever. But it's, it's a difficult thing. And some days he doesn't. And, and like he said, some days he doesn't even get out of bed. And Rabbi Weinberger said, you have to understand, you know, with, with what you're going through and everything, the one day that you get, that you, you, you do what you're supposed to do, and you don't, you know, and, and, and you don't uh, act out, and, and you stand up to this, uh, to this addiction, and the struggle that you have, etc., he said, you're one of the great heroes of the Jewish people. And he said, it's equal to someone like me putting on tefillin every day for my whole life. Whatever that's worth, your one day of struggle is worth all of that. So you have many days of struggle. It's, it's like you're living many, many lives throughout your life. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, I work with someone who, who's been in recovery since, like, almost before I was born. And he, he was an alcoholic, and I guess technically by what, the way we're, we're supposed to talk, he is an alcoholic, but he hasn't, he hasn't had a drink, like I said, in, in, in over 30 years. I mean, I'm 37, so maybe it hasn't been 37 years quite, but it's been 30 years, yes. He has, and in probably 32, 33 years he's been sober. And still, I hear other people talk about him. You know, when he's having like a difficult time, or this, oh, maybe he's back to drinking. And I was like, how can you talk like that? I have so much respect for this man. He turned his whole life around. He became devoted to his faith. He became ordained as a minister in his church. He 
work he he does hard work and, and like I said he hasn't had a drink in, in over 30 years and people still are cliched oh maybe he's back to and the thing is I'm guilty of that too I, I I said that also before I knew that he hasn't had a drink in 30 years you know so like I'm guilty of saying that also you know of, of that suspicion and I even had those words leave my mouth talking to the same person but I realized you know you have to it's not right and so I'm repenting of that of that being uh, you know of, of you know uh, suspecting someone who, who is not worthy of suspicion and, and I'll tell you a few years ago when I was a Rav in Richmond they opened a a recovery center and they asked all different religions they should come and say a blessing I remember there was even a Zoroastrian there you know that's you know and the uh, and, and I'm sorry for exotifying the Zoroastrians But, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. And it's funny how, you know, the first thing, you know, again, as a Yid, and this is another thing we have to repent of, you know, we think about, oh, how, you know, in the second century, the Zoroastrians had a fanatical group and they were and they were persecuting the Jews and we weren't allowed to light Shabbos candles, you know, and, and we couldn't say Shema Yisrael, right? And, that, and that's and, and a lot of things in our liturgy were colored by that experience in history. But meanwhile, we forget that, that the Zoroastrian built the second Besamikdash, you know, gave us the permission to build the second Besamikdash, right? And, and the Hakar Satayv that we should have, you know. Again, it's not a collective thing, and, and this guy from India. Who, who was living in Richmond, Virginia, has nothing to do not with the fanatics in the second century and not with 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 uh, King Darius or uh, or or or, uh, or, or uh, the, the other uh, all the other kings you know that that are mentioned um, in. in, in Tanakh that that were Zoroastrians, the Persian kings that that were very kind to the to the Jews. Uh, but it's just interesting. Again, that's another thing that we have to work on and can't be obsessed with, you know. But anyway, the and, and and again, we have to stop fetishizing anti-Semitism. Stop being obsessed with this. Stop assuming the whole world they're all anti-Semites. This and that. But anyway, the uh, <laughs> so the uh, where was I holding? The 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 problem that some people might have with what Rabbi Weinberger said was that, you know, pretty much it almost was saying that, like, this guy is potter for putting on tefillin, that he's not obligated, he's exempt from the obligation to put on tefillin, to daven three times a day, etc., etc., because he has to work on his recovery. And people are, like, people are going to be like, what, what on earth are you talking about? And, you know, it, it goes back to uh, Mitch Hedberg, who was a comedian who was a drug addict and died, you know, and he died from his addiction, and, you know, he, he uh, said, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, I used to have a drinking problem, I still do, but I used to also, and, but unfortunately, you know, he, he died from, from, his, from his drug problem, and he was a brilliant comedian, and... He said, you know, alcoholism is a disease, but it's a disease you can get yelled at for having, you know. They'll be like, Mitch, you're an alcoholic. No one says, like, oh, Mitch, you have lupus, you know. 
and it's attached to that is that you know if someone was in a coma you know one of our friends he just he'd been in a coma for like two weeks and now he just got out it was like a medically induced coma and now he's out of the coma and he finally got to punch Phil in today or yesterday and we've been dominating for him so he can kill him and he's a very beloved part of the community everybody loves this man he's just a, a wonderful person and and I look up to him and respect him tremendously and so so yesterday he, he got to punch Phil in right for the first time in two weeks. It's poor him, he'd been sick. And now now he got to punch Phil in yesterday. And then I assume today he put on Phil. And does anybody have a tie on him? And no one should have to know from this. And Hashem should have on us, Hashem should have mercy on us. We shouldn't have to know from these things. But does anybody say, oh, those two weeks, uh, you know, Steve said you didn't put on Phil in, you know. Uh, it's uh, no, of course not, because you're in a coma. Yeah. Was someone thinking? You know, also, we should we should put we should just put fill it on his on his sleeping body. No, we don't do that, you know. And, and you know, so and then also, you know, I, you know, I know some people like like they mess up and then maybe they miss one day fill it and then like they'll go they'll just stop putting on fill it or whatever it is. You know, it, it doesn't work that way either. You know. Uh, you know, no one would say, oh, you know, because he didn't put on the tefillin for these two weeks, you know, uh, so now, now, uh, oh, he's off the derech, you know, and it's the same thing here, you know, alcoholism is a disease, all these, all of these, uh, all of these, uh, all of these addictions are diseases, and there's some points in the person's, you know, of course, a lot of time a person is sick and they, and they put on tefillin and sometimes they're sick and they can't put on tefillin. They don't have to be in a coma, you know. There's certain things, halakhically, not a lot to put on tefillin. If you have certain illnesses, you know, and we don't have to get into the halachas right now. You're not allowed to, not only not, you don't have to, you're not allowed to put on tefillin under certain circumstances of, of illness. Even if someone is, is up and, 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 you know, somewhat functioning, they can't put on the tefillin. So, uh, meaning I'll be halacha. So, it's the same thing. If this person is, if this person is mamish sick. And it's not like, it's not an illness that you should be yelled at for having. It's really a mental illness and an addiction. It's no different than a physical illness. And so, if this person is, is sick with this, uh, there are certain times, and again, maybe a Paisic has to decide, but maybe a person knows on their own where they're holding. That they're, they're Potter, in a certain sense, whatever it is, and again, I'm not, I'm not a poisic here, but that they, they, they would be Potter from Tefillin, just like, you know, just like if, if they were in a coma or if they had uh, intestinal, you know, bowel troubles that would prevent them from, from putting on Tefillin, etc., etc. And it's the same thing, you know. We work in the mental hospital. My wife and I are chaplains. I haven't been there since last year for him, but you know, sometimes you have, you know. From Bachami and Galai, they come in and they won't let them put fill in because they're afraid they can hang themselves with it, you know. So uh, they have to get special permission. They have to vet. And uh, this isn't this, uh, you know, this is not a Nazi, you know, saying I'm going to shoot you if you put on fill in, you know. This is someone who cares about you. They want to help you. And I know that's like the default. The same thing, just like oh, you meet the Zoroastrian and then you think about. You think about the, the oppression that they did to us, and, and the and the discrimination, and the and the persecution, and we forget about all the good things that that the Zoroastrians did for us, you know. And we got to get rid of that. And the same thing is here. This is America. They're, they're not they're not out to get us as Jews. They're not out, you know. The 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 things that were you know going on 
with Corona, all, the churches were closed too, not just the shuls. The mosques were closed too. You know, it wasn't an attack particularly on the Jewish community. Now, perhaps was a, there an attack in general on the religious communities? That's a different story, and we can talk about it at a different time. And, and, and there, there is what to talk about there. And perhaps that's the, also the lesson is that we have to unite all the religious communities against the, what you could, uh, you know, some people, I don't mean this to be disrespectful to Islam or to Muslims, but the kind of the secular jihad, that's a term that's been used, and I think it's apropos, um, the, the, the uh, types of things that, that we've seen in communist countries and also in, in other countries like, like, uh, like Turkey and France, where there's a, a concerted anti-religious effort in general. And that's a problem. And again, we have to look carefully and try to understand the situation. But anyway, that's my defense to what Rabbi Weinberg was saying there about this Jew who uh, you know, said that he didn't talk to every day and he's suffering with a very bad addiction. And he felt that he's such a sinner and a, a, a Zionistic of a Shafanish. And why did God create him? And, and you know, and he said, you know, God created you for a purpose. And, and if you're here, God wants you here. And you're, you're one of the great heroes of the Klal Yisrael. When Mashiach comes, we're all going to be looking up to you as Mamish like a goggle. And like, and I know, you know, people were upset at Rabbi Weinberg. These are your gedolim. And 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 the answer is yes. And it, it, you know, <laughs> yes. They, these are people who understand what it means. You know, how many of us understand Imesach Shemaim Shemata? People who sit and learn in Koilu all day, the Mamish and Shemayim, and they don't, and they don't feel the Shemata. I'll have to translate that. You know, Psalm one thirty nine says, "If I go up to heaven, you are there, and if I make my bed in hell." Behold, I behold you. Behold, you are there. Again, how many of us who live good, beautiful, from lives, daven three times a day, maybe you get to go to shul, maybe you get to sit and learn in koilal, etc., etc. How many of us feel in the Shemaim, the Sham Atta? That God, that you are there, God. If I go up to heaven, if you do, you're you're already ahead of the game. But a lot of these people who are at CSO, who are making their beds in hell, they know what it means hinako. They know what that means. So yes, that's why they're they're the gadolim. That was really the message that that I said when I gave that blessing and I blew the shreifer and said a little mishabarach something at this recovery center because that's what that's what the psalmist is telling us and I know I know enough that it's the psalmist not the palmist right so that's our first video with this series we're going to make two videos um, and maybe make another one if, if there's something else controversial that comes up I think it's better this way Keep it short. Instead of making a 40-minute video, make a 23-minute video, 24-minute video. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment, and we'll see you later.